Papoose, break your bones, break your bones, break your bones. Papoose confronts Remy Ma for threatening his new boo. That's what I ran across on the YouTube. So that's why I put something similar to that in the title. But I ain't hear Papoose say a word. I ain't hear Remy say a word other than social media doing what they doing. But I love this content. So I'm going to share it with you. So go check out Baddie's uh, patio. You know what I mean? But I'm going to give you my perspective, my reaction. Let's get this thing moving. But before we go, I want you to know why we do what we do over here at Unique Mecca Audio. All right? This is for the youth. If we could stop one person from going down a life of crime, we succeeded. And right now, here's one of our success stories. If y'all got a success story, send a video, hold the phone sideways. When I say sideways, I mean like this, and record what Unique Mecca Audio have done for you. Since watching it, send it, and I'll put you up here and promote your page. Cause make sure y'all check out my man, Murder Moo. All right, let's get him going. Because y'all ain't ready for Murder Mook, man. You know, he keeps it 100. Here we go. All right? That's going to be the background I'm going to use. Hey, what's going on, man? Murder Mook, all of them, you know what it is, man. I just want to express how much gratitude I got for Unique. You know what I mean? Uh, I was telling him a story, telling him how I felt about, you know, um, if anything was to go wrong with my career, you know, if you know, should be slow, and I got so many opportunities to be able to do the wrong shit. When I watch Unique Mecca Audio, I feel it, and I like to my soul, and that's keeping me farthest away from doing anything criminal. Anything criminal. He made me sh think straight, honestly. Made me think straight because I've been watching him for like. A year, like a year now, maybe, and it just took my mind way off of that, way off of that. From from a year ago, it got rough for a year ago, and from watching this man, I just felt like, you saved me, you saved me, and I just want to show my gratitude, and I want to say thank you, man. You need back audio, anything you need, brother. For me, all right. Anything me, man. All right. Love. So this is what it is, right? This right here is Papoose confronts Remy Ma for threatening his new girlfriend. This is a video I found over on Baddies Radio. I didn't see nothing in it that dealt with it, but the content was fire. So I'm going to give Baddies a round of applause. <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to play the videos that people is making these crazy titles and crazy this. If the content is good... I'm going to, you know, ignore the uh, the, 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 the title because I didn't hear Pat say none of that. And Pat from the Bronx, he might be a romantic dude. He might be a, but I love a dog dude, but he's a straight gangster. Before I begin, I'm going to tell you about one of my love a dog dudes. All right? This is going to be like a mixture of a prison story. I'm in Lump Park, California, right? And I'm, I'm locked up in a shoe. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm waiting to get transferred. And they put me to sell my man, you know, Guy Williams from down in um, Charlotte. If anybody know Guy Williams, he should be home by now. Tell Guy Williams to hit me up, right? So me and Guy Williams in the cell, right? I'm even going to say his name, you know, so he could come up here and dispute this and you can hear this Lily Pucious excuse he got for being a but a love a dog dude. Dudes be love a dog dudes and just don't want to admit it, right? I'm in a hole. A little young and hear me talking through the vent. I'm talking my trash, you know, through the bars. Everybody listening, you know, late night. It's like three in the morning. You know what I mean? Right now, you know, we, we going to add some music to this. I, I want to I, I wanna add some music to this. You know what I mean? While, while I tell this story, right? Because this, 
is, uh, you know, where we at. Just sit back, listen to the music, and listen to this story. I'm in a hole in Lump Park, and we laid back in the cell late night, all the lights out. You know, I'm in a single cell. I'm laying up with my head towards the bars, and everybody else's bars is going down there. And I'm yelling out the, you know, vent, and I'm telling about all the different types of women I had. You know what I mean? They'd be like, yo, what, 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 what's Russian sex like? I'd be like, yo, that joint cold, man. I had this Russian girl. As soon as I put it in, my joint froze off like it was icicles. And everybody busts out laughing. Then dude might say, yo, what, what? What was an Asian girl like? You you don't have all the girls, you know? I'd be like, man, oh, a, a, Asian sex, instead of going straight up and down or straight in like we know here in America, that joint go like sideways, you know what I mean? So that makes it tighter and, you know, you got to push more. You see her eyes open and her, they like, oh, you crazy, you crazy. So while we talking, it's a young boy just coming in because they had a big riot over there at uh, Talladega. Talladega is like a low over there in Long Beach where Snoop from, right? They had a ride over there with the blacks and the Mexicans, young black dudes came in with fire. I'm talking a little faster, speed it up so I can get back to Remy Ma for all you rat <laughs> bastards that don't understand what this is about. This is about ride. All right, so check, right? So they had a big ride over there with the black dudes in the uh, Sereno. So now Hick and the black dudes come in. I get the black dudes on my range and uh, the other ranges. They might, you know, put the Serenos and they kept them separate. And we up there and it's a young boy. He hear me talking trash. He's about 22. Never heard nobody talk crazy like that. I mean, this was in 2001. So at this time, I must have been like 38. You know what I mean? About 38 at the time. And he was 22. So as I'm talking all this trash, I say, man, I met this girl while I was over there in uh, Talladega, and I want you to meet her mother. You know what I mean? Because the mother always talked trashy all in my business. So he put me on the mother. I wrote the mother a letter. I stayed up that night, and I wrote the mother like a five-page letter. You know, they, and, and this is on this is on the legal pad. This is what you call legal pad in the prison, right? I wrote a five-page letter on a new paper like this, right? But I put some of the most powerful, unique words down. When the joint got there, it took about four or five days. I said, yo, youngin', what's up? Ma ain't get my letter. He said, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. Yeah, she got it. She said when she got it and she saw it, because it's 2001. I was just learning to read and write. I just got my GED in 98, so I didn't even know how to write yet. So she like, oh, I got it. But she thought it was a letter from her daughter, you know, because the handwriting was so bad. How old's her daughter? She said nine. I said, what? I ride like a nine-year-old chick. And we all start laughing and they riding me, you know? And then dude said, yo, but you got a dog, <laughs> you know? California dude, he said, yo, you got a dog. I said, oh man, I'm good now, you know? So I start writing, next thing you know, she start coming to visit me. Everything is good. She's doing what she's supposed to do, if y'all know what I mean. You know what I mean? When you're in the prison, so. I'm getting ready to leave to get transferred back east. So I put my man, Guy Williams, that's in the cell with me on her sister. He getting in the joint with the sister. And by the time I leave from Long Park to get to Oklahoma, because you got to go from Long Park to Oklahoma, you know, on a plane. And they do what they call a holdover. Then you wait till the day of the week when whatever prison you're going to, plane is loaded up with them, all the people coming from all over to the Midwest to go where they need to go. So I'm trapped in that situation. As soon as I get off the plane, and the plane ride was about two hours, two hours to get checked in. Four hours later, I get on the phone and the girl mad at me, say, man, I ain't talking no more. You the dog, you left me. You going back uh, east to be with your girl. I said, hold up, I never told you that I wanted a relationship. She said, nah, I know, but still you going back east to be with a girl. I said, yo, I told you I had a girl. She said, yeah, I know, but you going back east to be with a girl. I said, yo, so if I told you that you knew that, so we ain't got no business saying none of this, is just shut the heck up up. And I ain't trying to hear that crap. You know what I mean? But anyway, long story short, um, I asked her, what happened? You know what I mean? Like, where did this come from? She said, oh, no, God told me that you was leaving to go back east to be with your girl. And you was just blowing smoke up my blah, 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 blah. I said, God told you that? She said, nah, he didn't tell me. He told my sister because I put guy on her sister. And that's why we don't put dudes on our family members or close friends because you don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> but when he did that, he done went and told her. So she comes now. said, my sister said, my sister said, my sister said. 
But long story short, I wound up losing the trip, bro. But we in a hole in Lump Park, and that's how we passed our time. Then I ran into my man Guy over in Victorville in 2007, 2008. If you want to know what happened with that, put it in the comments. But let me start this joint. Been on here long enough telling you about my stories. Let's get to this joint. But first, let's take the beat out. All right. And let's get uh, my man uh, Geechee Gotti talking about Remy Ma. Then we're going to react to Papoose confronts Remy Ma for threatening his new girlfriend. Just tell him stop screwing the business. All right. If you found out you was in the hip, that could really ruin your image. Yeah. We're talking yeah. Talk. Barack and Michelle, uh -huh. Pap and Rim. Yeah. Yeah, that's us. Y'all the poster child symbol for black love. Yeah. 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 When do you think that y'all marriages still have to go through them stages? Uh -huh. Every every interview, he show his admiration and tell the world how he think his woman the greatest. Yeah. And he held you down in prison for six years. Yeah. Um, now we gotta address the elephant in the room. Like get you went crazy, you know the whole. Can we even talk about the whole easy to pat post now that he don't talk as much as they talked on the stage? Oh, he too. Yes. He started with the blogs for the past few months. The blog, okay. That's that's what it sounds like. Okay. Yo, don't Remy sound a little uncomfortable, Remy? That don't sound like the Remy I know. Hey, Remy, let me get some advice, right? This is my advice. My opinion don't mean nothing. I'm not a big star. You're a big star. I'm just a little YouTuber now. Just be you. Tell us how you really feel. Because <clears throat> me, it's just me. This is how I feel you really feel. Yo, I got locked up. Dude was on my strap. You know what I mean? I dealt with him. I had other dudes that I was really more interested in. I even know one of them, but I'm not even going to say the name. But I got other dudes I was more interested in, but you what's out here and you're, the, you're what's here right now holding me down while I'm getting ready to do this charge. So I'm going to deal with it, you know? But I'm just not into you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Pap, no disrespect, didn't want to take that. Pap felt he could win over with what he called and coined black love. But the thing is, when you're dealing with a female from the street, they don't want black love, my brother. They want that unique love. They want you to tell them why you riding down the street and you feeling good. They want you to tell them straight up, damn, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, yo, let, let, let's pull over in that mall parking lot and, you know, get in the back seat. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what she wants. Now, you get the... Civilian time chick, you know, that just be chilling. They might sit there and they'll tell you something lame like, you know, it's kind of nice out, but let's go to the mall, you know? Yeah, the mall for what? I just want to go to the mall. But the mall on the other side of town, you know, but they, instead of her just saying, yo, let's go to the mall so we can climb in the back seat and do what we got to do. You know what I mean? That's what Remy Ma wants. But Papoose sat there and he wanted to tell about how it's getting ready to rain. He wanted to get the car out the rain and he wanted to go in the mall, you know? But any real dude from the street, they want a female, right? And it's for the ladies. So you understand when you're dealing with a dude in the street, you riding down the street with your man and you're feeling good. You know how in the movies they start at their yard and they, ah, put the arm around, you know, a person's neck on the back of the headrest, you know? That's the movies. Real life, real life dudes from the street. We just tell them straight up, yo, come here. And put an arm around the neck and throw in a chokehold, let lay your head on the chair. You got to do it aggressive. She ain't going to respect it if you don't do it aggressive. And I know you, rat. It's quick to say, Oh, you're too aggressive. No, that's what they want when they're from the street. Especially when they look like a dime. They want you to just throw your arm around a neck and say, come here, stop this mess. They don't want you to argue back and forth with him and try and argue your point. You got to tell me, I ain't trying to hear that. You know, when they go down somewhere you want, you don't want to go, you know what I mean? That you know it's going to take you and that, you know, other person somewhere else. Ladies, just tell them straight up, yo, I ain't trying to go. But I saw you out with such and such the other day. My girlfriend saw you. Nah, I don't want to hear that. 
And this is not the time for it. Yeah, I don't hear that. And that's what we do from the street. We're going to deal with the issue, but not right now. You hear that, ladies? Put that aside. If the dude says, I don't want to hear that, you just say, okay. But that don't mean that you bury it. You bring it back. But you bring it back when it's ready. You say, yo, you ready to talk about what I mentioned in the car before I pulled over in that little uh, mall parking lot and we got in the back seat? <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he'll pull out a spliff. And he'll take a couple of puffs, get good and right, and say, all right, go ahead, boo, what's up? My girlfriend told me she had pictures of you when you were in the club. Your name's guilty. You about buying bottles at the bar and I. <clears throat> you know. I'd be like, yeah, all right. You know, and that's how you respond. Okay, yeah, all right. And, like, where do we go from here? No explanation for that. If you was at the ball, you was buying girls bottles, you were doing whatever you were doing. You just say, okay, and where do we go from here? End the story. You see how, see how that just bet everything with all the, the, the social media thoughts? It just, you know? And, and, yes, that is our version of not wanting to deal with the issue. We messed up, we claim that, we apologize, we want, want to move forward. But you say, but you never apologize. Yo, my actions by not feeding into it is apologizing. Because I'd be disrespecting you if I tried to clarify why I was buying females bottles at the bar. It's not your business what I do with my money. It's just your business what my image reflects on you and that's it so therefore if any of you ladies don't agree with what i'm saying say think what i'm saying is being creepy or whatever you want to think it is that's your prerogative put it in the comments that's what unique mecca audio is about i'm just telling you how it is on the street we say we don't want to deal with it end of it done with that let's play this video because y'all might not be ready for this man but he was, I, I don't know if you, uh, how comfortable or uncomfortable you were with him standing there just saying I'm all of this I'm to you. Listen, this battle rap. I knew when I got in here, like I done been to a thousand battles, seen the battle of turns, say something to bleed, say something to smack, like so I'm, I'm used to it. But you wasn't expecting your business to be exposed like that, Remy. Stop it, man. Remy. I respect your gangster, official Bronx Boogie, once you put that cap in up. I knew you was that. <laughs> you know? And y'all can hate me for saying it, but I'm just letting you know what it is. You feel somebody took something, you already know what it is. We got a thing. Let's ride. We got a thing in Jamaica, like I said before, called discipline. Somebody takes something from you and you love them, you know? You don't want to kill them, but you have to discipline them. You're a soldier in the war. You don't want to shoot him in a vital area. So you discipline him by just shooting him in his leg and hope you don't hit a blood vessel and he bleed out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But if that sounds funny, crazy to you, you can't comprehend where I'm coming from, that means you're on the right path. Don't get involved in the street because that's how simple it is. Dude violates you and then you <laughs> put one in his leg and tell him, don't do that blood clot no more. See? Because men don't want to have to, you know, dead job. And that's how it is. That's why I say don't get involved in the street because you don't want it. But Remy, stop that. Just tell it straight up. I met Pap. You know what I mean? I had other things going on. He's the one that was willing to do the bid. So I, so I, I gave in to him and I allowed him to do the bid with me. Was I ready to marry him? No. Was he ready to marry me? Yes. Did he propose? Yes. Is he a romantic dude? Yes. Is, the, is he the greatest man you ever met? Yes. Because Pap is that dude. Because he's with black love. But like I said, the women from the street don't want black love. They want that gangster. Love. They want you to be real wrong. Come on, man. Let me play this joint, man. Y'all ain't ready for this. 
was like to be expected. It's not the first time somebody said my name in one of the rounds, but. Right. Like Y'all remember how Remy Ma was still out here running her mouth on IG defending herself for cheating on Papoose when everyone in their mama was dragging her for stepping out on her devoted husband? Well, and that's where Remy Ma should have just said, yo, mind your business. It don't cost nothing to mind your business. So y'all rappers and entertainers and R&B singers and whatever you want to be, when they call you up on them platforms and they ask you to speak on your indiscretion or something you ain't proud of or you knew you shouldn't have done but you did, you just tell them, yo, mind your business. Just look that, just look that interview in the face and say, yo, you know what? Unique Mecca Audio told me to tell you, mind your business. My man Boogie Black got a song, right? Big shout out to Boogie Black. <laughs> Big shout out, big, 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 big shout out to Boogie Black. Biggie, Boogie Black got a song called Mind Your Mother Effing Business. And that's what y'all podcasters need to be told when you ask questions don't know. Like they get mad at Vlad. Oh, you know what, man? Vlad is a poly, Vlad did that, Vlad did that, he asked him this. No, you didn't have to answer that. And I'm not defending Vlad, because I know the rat <laughs> bastards. <laughs> Because you're always defending them. No, I'm just saying. Somebody asked me a question. When I went on Queen's Flip, when I came on my first video, I told Queen's Flip straight up, yo, ask me something stupid. We're going to turn this joint up, and we're going to break every camera in here. So it's up to you if you want to break every camera in here, or you just let me know now if you're trying to fight. I didn't know Queen's Flip. I didn't know he was just a funny dude. But, I mean, I'm just coming home, and when I meet somebody, I let them know where I, want, where I stand at. And right now, that's my nephew. Love him to death. He taught me a lot about YouTube and how to... I could call Queens Flip right now if I get the dude on the phone. Because, you know, right now, he with Joe Button. He big time on, you know, major podcast. But when I was able to get him on the phone... I'm going to try and call him today. Just see if he answers. I'll let you know tomorrow. When I, when I was... Before Joe, Joe Button. You know what I mean? I'm not saying he got bougie or nothing. But he's, you know, he big time now. But before Joe Button, yeah, he's not bougie, but he big time. You know, I got to keep saying, he's not bougie, but he big. You know, Queen Flip, not bougie. That's one of the realest dudes I know. I watched him when he went to one of the islands to go visit somebody that got deported. I don't remember who it was. Queen's Flip, man, I love him to death. He gave me my start. If y'all didn't see the video, he labeled me the cockiest kingpin, and it's Queen's Flip episode 160. I might play it on here and do a reaction to it with y'all. I'm going to do a live reaction to that joint with y'all. You know, but anyway... If you want to put it in the comment, let me get back to this, man. Well, the affair with Easy to Block Captain was the last straw for Papoose. And even though it took a minute, Papoose rose from the despair and he has since moved on to another woman As who he, he is should. seemingly much happier with. And word on the street is that Remy Ma has been pretending to be happy with her new man. And she's been secretly stalking Papoose's new boo with fake IG accounts and threatening her to leave her man alone. Nah. How would anybody know that but Papoose? And I know Papoose is not going to put their business out there because he's for black love. With social media running with it, that Remy stalking him, Remy this, Remy that, Papoose this, Papoose, you know, he confronts you, you know, Remy mom because you didn't be the girl. Papa ain't on that. He down with black love. That's just a straight romantic gangster. That ain't me. There's Pap, but that don't stop him from being a gangster. He's just what we call a romantic gangster. I keep romance out. When I get with a female, I don't want to be romance. I just want to bang, 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 and get out. After we're done having sex, right? After we have sex. <laughs> It's like after we do what we got to do to bed, right? The female is laying there. She rubbing, you know, the hairs on your chest and she's telling you how much she loves you and she's thinking about y'all going to get in a relationship. Y'all going to get matching wedding rings and matching, you know, unique Mecca Audio sweatshirts and man time, woman time caps and all that, right? That's what she's thinking. But then we're just thinking, when... 
I'm gonna get my next conquest. I've been trying to hit Susie for a minute. You know what I mean? I've been trying to hit Susie for a minute and she ain't give it to me yet. And I'm wondering why I ain't get this yet. I don't know. I just need to spend a little bit more time with Susie. And then I look over to my right and here go the shorty that I just bust a nut with and she think we in a relationship and I'm thinking how to get Susie. That's what we do when we on the street. And that's how we move when we on the street. I know this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all, hey y'all. So he he laying there, he laying there, right? Yo, dude is laying there, right? Awesome, real man, yo. He laying there, and he's thinking, man, I'm trying to bone the crap out of Susie. Susie got a gap on it that I know I'm feeling. She bow legged, and the whole time the female is laying her hand on, playing with the hairs on his chest, and she's saying, "Oh, we're gonna get matching BMWs, but we're gonna start with the matching." You know, uh, unique mecha audio jackets, you know? And he's thinking, yeah, maybe if I get Susie a unique mecha audio jacket, she'll give it to me a little faster. But you see how they both have different thoughts? That might be a little bit too much for you. Let me get back to this Remy Mall situation, because we was right. All right, let's go. Mm. And yeah, Papoose is done with the BS. He's trying to keep quiet for the sake of their kids and family, but Remy Ma keeps poking and poking that bear. Perhaps Remy Ma thought that her marriage with Papoose was gonna be the chaos that Kurt Frost and Rashida dwell in. And Yo, what are they saying about Kate Frost and Rashida? Why are they talking about Remy poking the bear? Did anybody hear Remy say anything to poke the bear? Did anybody hear Papoose say anything to poke the bear? But everybody's making all these social media joints and they creating this, what they call uh, conspiracy theories about Remy and Pap. Remy official. Pap official. It is what it is. We're not going to change nothing. We're just going to keep moving the way we move it because that's how we do over here at the Mecca. Now let's get back to this video. And she'd be able to go out, do whatever she wants, and come back to a faithful man at home. But as loyal as Pap was to her, he ain't about that life. I never cheated on nobody, so I don't know what y'all talking about. I said she never cheated on nobody, that nobody would be Papoose. Cheated on. She ain't lying. Let's ride. I know I had it on mute. Let's do what we got to do. I just didn't want you to hear what I had to say about that because that wasn't for YouTube. But check it out, right? Remy ain't never cheat on nobody. Remy was never committed to the relationship, so she wasn't cheating. Papoose now was committed, so if he do something, he'll be cheating because he gave his undying love and oath to this woman that he loves. All the woman got to do or say back is, I do. You do what? That's where it come up. You cheated. You married me. You told me you wouldn't break the vows. I didn't, but you cheated. But you said, I do. And then she asked him, I said, I do what? And then that's where he go into being me through love and thickness and everything that the preacher said. The preacher said that. I didn't say that. I'm just here because you got the bag. Not saying Pat Poots and Remy. Just give me all scenario. I'm just here because you got the bag. You own the big record company. You got all this money. You got this movie company. And I need a piece of that. But that don't mean I want to be with you. But yes, I want to be with you. When I want to be with you. And when I don't want to be with you, I'm going to find someone else to be with. But like Jay-Z said in Song Cry, I might be just screwing those hoes. But I'll be right back. Uh, all right. On nobody, so I don't know what y'all talking about. Uh, who nobody has seen her with in like a year and a half. So uh, people don't believe her. Something happened. Um, but Papoose, as we all know, is a real man. So he wouldn't be the type to come out and be like, yes, you did. Unlike <coughs> EEG. But um, she sounded defensive, which is never a good way to sound. So either the comments really got to her or it's true.
And it's really sad how she didn't realize just how much she had taken their relationship for granted until he was more than ready to step away from the situation. And word on the street is Pap is very happy. He never saw himself being with another woman other than Remy, but now that he's out from under her, life is looking pretty good for him. And your girl Remy ain't handling it well. It looks like the Timu version of Pap ain't doing it for her no more. And the little battle rapper that she was messing with, Bad News, doesn't seem to have the time or energy to hold her down the way Pap did. You know, the conversation that she spoke about when I said, I'll marry you, it was a, it was like a bad time because she was basically on trial. And that particular day, she was very upset. And she was saying things like, you know, nobody's going to be there for me. Nobody's going to support me. I'm going to lose the case. See right there? See, I, 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 I got to stop that. Pat, Pat, I love you, Pat. Listen, when I was locked up and I'm talking to people on the phone, they kept telling me about this kid named Pat Poos was out there tearing up the mixtape joint. He had a joint called Law Library. As a matter of fact, I'm going to play. I'm going to try and get you the instrumental and let you really hear who Pap is. Pap put that career on hold and Pap was fire. I would love to get Pap to do an uh, intro song for me. Pap is fire. Let's get that straight, right? But he put his career on hold to be with him. He's what they call in psychology, mollifying. Mollifying is when you make an excuse to make a wrong right. Pat Poos, you was wrong for thinking she wanted to marry you. You knew she didn't want to marry you. And you're given what we call straight up excuses why she didn't want to marry you. It wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right day. Your dog, she just wasn't into you. And then that's when Pat Poos respond. Not a disrespect to him. Y'all put in the comments, what Pat Poos going to respond when we tell him, your dog, she's just not into you. But I love a dog. You know, come on. Stop it, Pat. Yo, Pat, my number's on the screen. 917-680-9091. Call me. You know what I mean? And that's where that's at. Stop it, Pat. She's just not into you. She told you that when you just gave these mollifying excuses. I'm just going off your words now. What I hear you saying, breaking this down from the unique Mecca Audio Psychology. Make sure you go to Mecca Audio TV and subscribe and watch a couple of videos. I just got monetized. Round of applause. <laughs> all right, all right, relax, relax, relax. I just got monetized over there. I got my 100,000 subscriber plaque over here. Could we get 100,000 over there? I'm going to be doing different things right now. I'm just sharing videos from here, putting them over there, things like that. Just go watch it for a couple of minutes. Give me a little watch time. Now, so, Pat, stop it. She's just not into you, dog. You don't need to make excuses why she don't want to marry you. From they say no, no means no. No don't mean no because. No is no. There's no because behind no, Pat. And to all of y'all listening, there's no. Listen, let's ride. This is something I learned in psychology, right? What I learned in psychology is one of the things I learned was that we try and justify our wrongs because of our pride and ego. And we don't use our intelligence because at that moment, will function off of emotions. You must know how to control your emotions. Papoose, you didn't want to get mad, so you made something up to justify why she just wasn't into you. Stop it. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Let's finish this. And I was trying to assure her, like, yo, you're going to win the case. You're not going to blow trial. I didn't think she was going to lose the case because the um, stories were so inconsistent and the case to me was both case and she just kept shooting me down so I was like I see he thought the case was a bullcrap case because he was emotionally connected to the victim but you know when a girl says she took my purse I thought I took her money I didn't take her money and I gave her two caps to the gut one cap to the gut whatever it is that's pretty compelling my brother Everything else you're saying is just showing that you was emotionally and rightfully so connected 
to the woman that you loved because you're dealing with black love. And what do we say to black love? But I love a dog. I marry you. And she flipped on me. <laughs> you see that? Listen. And honestly, I don't think it was the reason for her flipping on me was what she said. The re See, you see what I'm saying? He don't believe the reason why Remy flipped on him was the reason that she said. So forget what she's saying. I'm going to tell you what she mean. No, this is what you want her to mean in order for you to move forward with your bruised pride and ego. That's for any man in this situation. It's not just for Pap. And that's my exception or conception from my psychology training. The reason why I think she flipped on me was because I, I took it like and I felt like She's been lied to in, in the past, and men have such a bad release, um, reputation for not keeping their word, for not being loyal, for not being there for no one when they're going through hard times, and just not being faithful or loyal to, to the lady. And I felt like she she looked at it like, you're full of shit. Like, you're not going to marry me. You're not going to be there for me. And that's why she lashed out. No, she didn't lash out because of that. Pap, stop the bull crap. What are you doing, man? Stand up for us. She just wasn't into you. That's it. Face the facts. She just wasn't into you. No disrespect, but you sound wimpish right now. Stop it, Pat. Please stop it, Pat. My number getting ready to come up on the screen. Somebody tell Pat to call me, man. So we could sit down and we could tighten this, you know, black love thing up. You need to balance the black love with the gangster love. With the unique love. You're supposed to say, all right, you don't want to marry me? All right, you know, bend over. Let me get a back shot. You know what I mean? So I know you still love me at least. You don't want to marry me, but you love me. Bend over. Let me get a back shot. And that's how I would have handled that. Oh, you don't want to marry me? All right, bend over. Let me get a back shot. Because obviously that's all we into right now with loss. You obviously don't love me because you don't want to marry me. He said, man, don't let me get that back. That's how it's handled on the street. So if you don't like what I'm saying, if it's too harsh for you, don't go on the street. Because we got to suck it up, man, and know when they just not into us. Let's get this thing moving, man. That was the only rational reason I could think in my head. Like, why did I just get flipped on but damn near proposing, you know what I mean? Now that her son is being... She said he got flipped on for damn near proposing. If that's not a sign, Pap? Pap, is that not a sign? Ladies, put in the comments, is that a sign? Homies, put in the comment, is that a sign? You ask somebody to marry you and they flip on you. Oh, you know, I'm going through court. You know, I'm going through this. You know, I'm going through that. My life is just a wreck right now because I'm just trying to go to this stomach because you owe me a couple of dollars. And now you sit and you start asking me to marry you. Oh, you're so evil. Whoa. 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 Somebody tell me. All right, but anyway, let's get back to this, man being charged with first degree murder and the chances of him going to prison are sky high. Sources say that Remy is starting to miss the support and loyalty that Papoose gave her. With her son heading to court to fight for his freedom, it seems like she has no one in her corner. She thought she'd be okay with Pap gone, but seeing him love another woman the way he loved her is really rubbing her the wrong way. And all right, say stop it, stop it, stop it. Hold on, let me, let me change the scenes on this. We got, we, 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 we got to keep this more on it. And let me get close and talk to you, right? Y'all stop it. You understand? Remy didn't care about seeing him with somebody else, being with somebody else or whatever. All Remy wants is her. Mm, she had to put this so y'all could understand it. All Remy wanted was her cock in the bank back. You know what a cock in the bank is? A cock in the bank is knowing that when you go home, if you can't get nothing when you out there, you go home and you get that cock. But when you go out, you're looking for other cock. If you don't get nothing, you go get that cock. So Remy is asking for her, no disrespect, just keeping it street. Cock in the bank. Back. Gunshot.
Can't get no more realer than that. If you're in your emotions, that means that you're on the right path to being a good citizen and you believe a dude is going to be loyal to you and a woman is going to be loyal to you. Pap, she's just not loyal to you because she's just not into you. She's grown. Before she met you, she knew other dudes and females. I'm not saying that she's into females, but knew other dudes and females. I'm not saying that she's into females. So if you propose that she flip, he's just not into you. I... And word on the street also is that she started stalking Pap's new girlfriend, messaging her with fake accounts and running her mouth about how she likes to fight and buy. Yo, his girl look pretty good, dog. That's his new girl, y'all. Put in the comments, that's his new girl. Box because Pap's new girl just so Ooh. happens to be a boxer. Yeah, I really be feeling like every now and then somebody needs to get the. What you talking about? And you see how they make it like she's talking to Pap's new girl, the boxer, when somebody just asked in a comment, "How do you feel about fighting?" And she said, "Sometimes they just need it," and they don't switch that all up on social media and made it that Remy Ma is challenging Pap's new girl. Welcome to social media. I had to learn this the hard way. Not to talk about they still beefing. Yes, they ain't fight yet. They got to fight. Like people like, oh, fighting is beneath me. Da, 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 da. Like, no, it's not. And you 100% right. Because you never know when a young dude want to jump out there. That's why every day I get up, take my dog Kilo in the backyard, and I get my pull-ups and push-ups in, and I make sure when I leave out, everything is with me that I need to have with me to be able to protect myself from those that might feel that 60 is too old. Tyson, you should have never gotten a fight in the ring with Jake uh, Logan. Go watch the Jake Logan uh, commentary that I did over there, man. All right? Hi, what are you talking about? It, it, it cancels a lot of problems. I don't care. I don't care. If you know you little, don't with people. I know little world girls that beat big girls' ass. I know little dudes that beat big dudes. Let's stop it. Stop it. Sound good, though, Remy. That's bigger than you. Like, what you talking about? I don't have no sympathy for you. Oh, well, you knew you was little and you knew she was big when you was talking shit. So what you saying, Remy? Let's get this right. So we're not supposed to have no sympathy for you if this smaller woman than you, not saying Pap's new girl, but if some smaller woman grabbed you, body slammed you, and dropped you all on your head and snatched your weave off and kicked you in your face, we're not supposed to have no sympathy for you. You know, I like that. I like your gangster, Remy. That's Bronx all day. BX! That's, that's what just happened. Honestly, it looks like Remy Ma is trying to back that woman in the corner and get her to react to the things that she's been saying about her. And the only reason, well, at least one of the reasons why it hasn't gone further than that is because Papoose is keeping the peace. He and Remy do have a young daughter together and the last thing he wants is for her to grow up and see her parents fighting with each other in front of the whole world. But Remy Ma keeps acting crazy. How do you get to cheat on the man that held you down during your stint in prison with a poor Poorly made lookalike of him, take zero accountability, and still expect for him to be there for you? Chow, make it make sense. And Papoose is drawing the line finally. This new relationship is something that he wants to protect, and folks are starting to lose their patience with Remy Ma. Quote, Man, what do you mean, oh, oh, oh. what do you mean lose your patience? What is Remy Ma doing that y'all need to lose your patience? Remy's doing what a Bronx woman would do. She's handling her business. Remy from the street. Pap, tighten up, man. But I love a dog. Nah, we don't do that at the minute. Remy Ma has a lot of nerve to even think that Papoose would be stupid enough not to move on with his life without her. She left Papoose for another man. She's mad because Papoose moved on well and found better, end quote. Quote, Remy is tacky, classless, masculine, and narcissistic. Remy never deserved Pap, end quote. And also, quote, so she thought he was gonna stay single? I'm happy for him and I hope his new love treats him good, end quote. But I wanna know what you all think about this mess. Will Remy finally realize that Papoose is never coming back? What do y'all think? Do y'all think Remy would realize that Papoose is never coming back or you think that Papoose is coming back because he's a straight up but I love a dog? Y'all let me know in the comments. 
Yo, Pep, get back to your music. Your music is fire. Now that you got the distraction of marriage and loyalty, because you're a loyal dude, man. And, you know, get back to your music, man. That that joint he got called Law Library. Y'all look up Papoose Law Library. That joint hit my soul when I heard it. Cop the book of Roy in Harlem. Do what you need to do. Make sure you go subscribe at Mecca Audio TV. Subscribe at Mecca Audio TV. I want to thank y'all. And just know the reason why we do this is hey, straight up, on, man. Right here. Word of move. All of them know what it is, man. I just want to express how much gratitude I got for me. You know what I mean? Uh, I was telling him a story, telling him how I felt about, you know, um, if anything was to go wrong with my career, rap wise, you know, if you know, shit was so, I got so many opportunities to be able to do the wrong shit when I watch. Unique Mecca Audio, I feel it and I like to my soul, and that's keeping me farthest away from doing anything criminal. Anything criminal. He made me sh think straight, honestly. Made me think straight because I've been watching him for like a year, like a year now, maybe. And it just took my mind way off of that, way off of that. From, from a year ago, it got rough. Four years ago, and from watching this man, I just felt like, you saved me. You saved me. And I just want to show my gratitude, and I want to say thank you, man. You need back audio, anything you need, brother, from me. All right. Anything you need, man. All right. Love. Hey, what's going on, man? Mother Cheers, cheers, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime.